Hey guys, we haven't done one of these in a little while. Let's do a live trivia show. Hope some of y'all can join in. The uh, clubs and everything are opening up. So I've been doing uh, a lot of live shows out at the bars and venues. And now we're gonna do another live one. I've been uh, recording some studio versions which I'll put out on my YouTube channel, which is Grateful Trivia. Please subscribe to that. It's a cool little collection of all the shows I've done, we've done. Starting out, I wanna thank some of the people who have uh, helped get this going. Jason Cope, who had a ton to do with the Technical, technological parts of this, uh, setting up the sound and the camera and everything. Technical, technological parts of this. Uh, and uh, I also want to thank the bands. Hey, Lauren, welcome. I also want to thank the bands, uh, Rabbit Hole Handbook and the Jamectomy Sessions. Those bands are uh, made up of Hernan Perez on guitar, Brian Post on bass, Elliot Jackson, Scott Roush on keys, and Cameron LaForest on drums. And now I can see everyone who's joining in. Welcome, Elisa, love you. Thank you for everything you've done. We got some people joining in, so I'll give it a little bit of time and then we'll start this trivia show up. We got some amazing rain here the last few days. In the desert, that's super welcome and wanted. And uh, it's been beautiful. High is 79 today, I think, which is amazing for the summer here. And um, let's start this show up. Start with a uh, choice of two. Which series has been on television the longest? The Simpsons or America's Funniest Home Videos? Again, uh, which series has been on television the longest? The Simpsons or America's Funniest Home Videos. Yeah, the rain here was just amazing. So relaxing. We've got our fall planned out for some live music. Well done, Eileen, and welcome. Actually, sorry, Eileen, that was not correct. But welcome, all the same. And again, that question was, which series has been on television the longest? The Simpsons or America's Funniest Home Videos? If anybody's able to tip, it's always appreciated. On Venmo, I'm Kevin-McMahon-83. And all the other ways are listed around this feed. Again, that question was, which series has been on television the longest, The Simpsons or America's Funniest Home Videos? And America's Funniest Home Videos has been on for three weeks longer, just barely edged it out. And on to the next question. In what state is Mount Rushmore located? Again, in what state is Mount Rushmore located? It's located in Sioux Indian Territory. The heads are 60 feet tall. And it would began being carved, I believe, in the 20s. Again, that question was, in what state is Mount Rushmore located? Well done, Janelle, and welcome. Well done, Eileen. 
Again, that question was, in what state is Mount Rushmore located? And that is South Dakota. Next question. What are the two highest grossing letters in Scrabble? Again, that is, what are the two highest grossing letters in Scrabble? Lisa and I play a Scrabble type game all the time. She usually wins pretty significantly. But the question was, what are the two highest grossing letters in Scrabble? The second one is correct on that. Z is one of the highest grossing, but not X. Again, that was. Not X and B. Z is one of them. This right here is the Jamectomy Sessions. The music. And again, that was. What are the two highest grossing letters in Scrabble? Z is one of them. Not V, but that's a really good guess. A couple of y'all guessed that. Z is one of them. The other one's quite a hard letter to make a word out of. And that was, what are the two highest grossing letters in Scrabble? Well done, Janelle. And thanks for joining again. I appreciate it. Again, that question was, what are the two highest grossing letters in Scrabble? And that would be Q and Z. If you get a quiz, you're going to score some points. Next question. In the fantasy adventure novel and movie, Watership Down, what animals are the featured main characters? Again, in the fantasy adventure novel and movie, Watership Down, what animals are the featured main characters? It's a story about some animals that have to leave their native habitat and try to make a home in a new area, facing all of the trials and tribulations that comes with that. But again, in the fantasy adventure novel and movie, Watership Down. What are what animals are the featured main characters? Loving my diet burners and Gatorade Zero. And that question was, in the fantasy adventure novel and movie, Watership Down, what animals are the featured main characters? Dolphins is a great guess. Well done, Eileen. That is correct. And that was in the fantasy adventure novel and movie, Watership Down. What animals are the featured main characters? And those are rabbits. <laughs> All right, the next question is, a lapidary is a craftsman who works with what? <laughs> I love me some diet burners and Gatorade Zero. A year ago at this time, or a little over a year ago now at this time, I was uh, drinking something quite different during these shows. And that was, a lapidary is a craftsman who works with what? This next song here is by Rabbit Hole Handbook. 
It's called Pocket Reprise. Thanks, Janelle. It's been like a little over a year now. Nope, not leather, but good guess. Well done, Janelle. Again, that question was, a lapidary's a craftsman. <laughs> it does say that on my shirt. I have forgotten. That's funny. Again, the question was, a lapidary is a craftsman who works with what? They work with stones or gems or minerals. And the next question. In the game of horseshoes, how much is a ringer worth in points? Again, in the game of horseshoes, how much is a ringer worth in points? When we were in Wisconsin, Elisa and I played the bags game against some stiff competition. We didn't fare so well, but it was a heck of a good time. Well done, Eileen. Again, that was in the game of horseshoes. How much is a ringer worth in points? And the correct answer to that is it's worth three points. And the next question, humans would fall into this category. What is an animal that eats both meat and foliage called? Again, what is an animal that eats both meat and foliage called? Well done, Janelle. Well done, Eileen. Again, that question was, what is an animal that eats both meat and foliage called? They are called omnivores. And the next question. What child star? made the most money in their career. Again, what child star made the most money in their career? It was quite a while ago that this child star began their career. Some of the more recent ones got close, but did not surpass this child star who went on to have quite a career not Drew Barrymore, but a great guess. This particular child star was in the longest movie ever made in Hollywood. Drew Barrymore was up there. I think she may have been 10th or 11th on the list. But this star made over $600 million in their career. Married a whole bunch. Shirley Temple was on that list too, but not her. This star was known for many marriages, I believe. She married one fella at least twice. And uh, she was in the longest movie ever made in Hollywood. It was quite the endeavor. Again, that was what child star made the most money in their career. The initials are the first movie I can remember seeing. Liz Taylor's another, well, that is it. Well done, Janelle. Good work. Again, that was what child star made the most money in their career. And that would be Elizabeth Taylor. 
And the next question, let's stick with the ladies. Who is the last female ruler of Russia? Again, who was the last female ruler of Russia? Nope, the longest movie ever made, I believe, I don't want to misspeak, was Cleopatra. And that next question was, who was the last female ruler of Russia? This woman had quite a story as well. She ruled for 34 years. Was known to take people to work for her that would bow to her wishes. Put a few of them in charge of neighboring countries. Again, that question was, who was the last female ruler of Russia? She based a lot of her changes of Russia on Peter the Great, who was uh, related to, I believe, her husband. She came from a different country than Russia, though. And again, that question was, who was the last female ruler of Russia? And the answer to that is Catherine the Great. Well done, Eileen. And the next question, who is the oldest first lady in U.S. history? Again, who is the oldest first lady in U.S. history? During, during the office of first lady, some first ladies lived quite a long time. 97, Carter's still around. Barbara Bush is still alive, but she was not the oldest one while serving. Barbara Bush, I believe, is 93 right now, and Joselyn Carter is 91. But this woman, Reagan, was not the oldest either. She was quite a bit younger than Ronnie. But this woman did not become first lady until she was 70. And it happened very recently. Again, that question was, who was the oldest first lady in US history? This right here is another uh, jamectomy jam. If you want to look it up, <laughs> I won't then, Janelle. Uh, this right here is, uh, if you want to look it up on Spotify, it is Cactus Jam, Cactus Jam number two, named after Cactus Jacks, which is down in Ahwatukee. Again, that was, who is the oldest first lady in US history? That would be Jill Biden, or Dr. Bill Jiden, Jill Biden. And the next one. What is yellow translated to in Spanish? Again, what is yellow translated to in Spanish? The word is in the title of one of Elisa's parents' favorite songs. But the question was, well done, Janelle.
then that is what is yellow translated to in Spanish? Again, what is yellow translated to in Spanish? That would be Amarillo. Amarillo by morning. All right, let's move on to another question. Get this sheet out of the way. Next question. Which U.S. city gets the most sun? Again, which U.S. city gets the most sun? It's a smaller city. After it, Phoenix is way up there. Where we live. But this one is probably five or six, seven days ahead. Boulder, Colorado is a great place, but not Boulder. The state gets that gets the most sun is where it's at. It's in Arizona. And Tempe, Arizona gets a lot too. Eileen, well done. Yep, on the way to San Diego. We drive through great old Yuma, Arizona, which is the city that gets the most sun. Next question. Which mafia boss's nickname was the Teflon Don? Again, which mafia boss's nickname was the Teflon Don? Rick Ross. Oh, I should I should have a story about Rick Ross, but I off the top of my head can't make one occur. But the question was well done Janelle. Nothing stick to him until the end. Again that was which mafia boss's nickname was the Teflon Don. And that was John Gotti. Next question. Who directed the Batman in which Michael Keaton portrayed the title character? Again, who directed the Batman in which Michael Keaton portrayed the title character? Michael Keaton was in two Batmans. He's about to reprise the role, I believe, in The Flash. So that should be pretty cool. Well done, Janelle. Not Snyder, but good guess. And that was who directed the Batman in which Michael Keaton portrayed the title character. It was a man known for his spooky films. Uh, he did a great film called Big Fish. But he directed the Batman in which Michael Keaton portrayed the title character. And that would be Tim Burton. Next question. What was the first animated television show to be broadcast in prime time? Again, what was the first animated television show to be broadcast in prime time. It was also the first show. Yeah, that's a great movie. We both like that one. The uh, animated television show in prime time. Yeah, that's a great one, Janelle. That's, I really like that. 
Not Charlie Brown. Good guess, Eileen. In this particular animated television show, it was the first show that showed a couple in the same bed sleeping together. It began to be aired in prime time in 1960. And the question was, what was the first animated television show to be broadcast in prime time? Not The Simpsons, but that is the longest running animated television show in prime time for sure. This one was about a couple, two couples that were neighbors. Well done, Janelle. Again, that was. What was the first animated television show that was broadcast in prime time? And that was The Flintstones. Well done, Eileen. Next one. What's the name of the town in New Mexico that has long been associated with UFOs. Again, what is the name of the town in New Mexico that has long been associated with UFOs? While I was reading, 65% of people in the US believe in life on other planets. A little less than 15% believe it's a serious threat. Well done, Eileen. Again, that was, what is the name of the town in New Mexico that's long been associated with UFOs? A funny meme that keeps popping up these days is, what if UFOs were just billionaires visiting from different planets? Again, that is, what's the name of the town in New Mexico that's long been associated with UFOs? That would be Roswell, New Mexico. In that particular city in the 1940s, there was a weather balloon that went down, which caused quite a stir. And then in the 70s, a retiring individual said that that weather balloon was just a cover up, stoking the flames. And on to the next question In what country was champagne invented? Again, in what country was champagne invented? Right here's Rabbit Hole Handbook that is playing in the background here. Well done, Eileen. This one's called Pink Elephant. If anybody ever gets a chance, check out Rabbit Hole Handbook. You can find them on Spotify. You can find them on SoundCloud. You can find them on a number of the streaming services. And if you're in the valley here where we live, Elisa and I, uh, they play live. Check them out. Again, that was in what country was champagne invented? That would be Wee oui, Wee oui, France. And the next one. Based on median income, what US state is the wealthiest? Again, based on median income, what US state is the wealthiest? Well done, Janelle, on that last one. And that was based on median income, what U.S. state is the wealthiest. It's an East Coast state, quite close to D.C.
Not Massachusetts, but that's a really good guess. Not Connecticut, another really good guess. That's where my father is from. We used to visit Connecticut quite often. Again, if anybody's able to tip, well done Janelle. Knocking it out of the park with that one. Again, if anybody's able to tip, it's always appreciated. On Venmo, I'm Kevin, Dash McMahon, Dash 83, and all the other ways are listed around this feed. Again, that question was based on median income. What U.S. state is the wealthiest? The answer to that one is Maryland. The next question. What was the first PG-13 movie that was released in the theaters? Again, what was the first PG-13 movie that was released in the theaters? The uh, first movie that was given the PG-13 rating, but it came out after the one I'm asking about, was The Flamingo Kid. Cool movie with uh, Matt Dillon. But this movie had some other famous people. It was about a town in Colorado. Again, the question was, what was the first PG-13 movie PG-13 rating was made because of the Temple of Doom, the Indiana Jones movie. George Lucas and Steven Spielberg were having some issues and the movie came out quite dark, so they made PG-13. And the question was, what was the first PG-13 movie ever released to the theaters? Lost Boys is a great guess. I remember that one. There's tons of stories about the people in that movie and how that particular movie, Lost Boys, uh, drove a lot of people to some bad life decisions. But the first PG-13 movie released in the theaters supposedly well took place in colorado and was called red dawn and the next question on what continent is the world's largest desert again on what continent is the world's largest desert This jam back to me here again. Cactus jam number three. Again, that was on what continent is the world's largest desert? Well done, Eileen. Well done. Most people think of a different temperature when it comes to deserts. But Eileen got that one right. Well done. Again, that was on what continent is the world's largest desert? And that would be Antarctica. It's the Antarctic Desert. Next one. What dog breed has the most best in show wins at the Westminster Dog Show? Again, what dog breed has the most best in show wins 
at the Westminster Dog Show. Eventually we're gonna get another dog. I don't know if it'll be this particular breed, but it has won the most best in shows. And that again was what dog breed has won the most best in show wins at the Westminster Dog Show. Basset Hound is a really good guess, but not that one. Well done, Eileen. That is it. Great job. Won it a lot of times. Again, that was what dog breed has won the most best in show wins at the uh, Westminster Dog Show, and that would be the Terrier, in particular, the Fox Terrier. All right, next question. What is the oldest fast food burger chain in the world? Again, that was, what is the oldest fast food burger chain in the world? They just got one of them out here in Arizona not that long ago. It's a hundred years old now. I always assumed it was from the East Coast, but it really started in Kansas. Well done, Janelle. Again, that was, what is the oldest fast food burger chain in the world? In and Out is a, well done, Eileen. In and Out has had drive-throughs for the longest. In and Out started in the 1940s. I believe it was 47. And uh, White Castle is the answer to that, though. The oldest fast food burger chain in the world is White Castle. Started in 1921 in Wichita, Kansas. But they have not had a White Castle in Wichita, Kansas since 1938. Next question. What common girl's name was invented by Shakespeare? Again, what common girl's name was invented by Shakespeare? It was from the Merchant of Venice, where this character was the daughter of the moneylender. <laughs> Wichita is getting gypped on the White Castles. Started for $700 in 1921. Shakespeare invented a lot of uh, cool words like eyeball, addiction, was a Shakespearean word. Not Juliet, but a good guess. Does start with a J. The name was based on the Hebrew word iska. If I'm cor uh, correctly pronouncing it, I hope, which meant vision or sight. Shakespeare also invented uh, the name Miranda, I believe Olivia, but the most popular name 
or common name. Now Olivia is pretty common. Well done, Janelle. Well done, Eileen. Again, that was what common girl's name was invented by Shakespeare. And that would be Jessica from the play The Merchant of Venice. Next question. What flavor is Frangelico? Again, what flavor is Frangelico? Very common. Correct, Janelle. But I was reading all the names and words that Shakespeare, not almond, but close. It is a nut, just a different one. And that was what flavor is Frangelico? And Frangelico, its flavor is hazelnut. Almond counts, I'd say. Next question, with the Olympics going on, well done, Eileen. Welcome, Mom. I hope you had a wonderful dinner. Well done, Janelle. Next question. Who is the most decorated U.S. Olympic gymnast? Again, who is the most decorated U.S. Olympic gymnast? We were just watching her perform. She was born in Ohio but put into foster care until her grandpa adopted her, raised her in Texas. Well done, Eileen. She was homeschooled. And now she's the most decorated U.S. Olympic gymnast. And again, that was, who is the most decorated U.S. Olympic gymnast. Next Sunday, we're going to do uh, an Olympic-themed one. I have a lot of Olympic questions for the coming week, and I'll share them here next Sunday. Again, that question was, who is the most decorated U.S. Olympic gymnast? And that is Simone Biles. Next question. What was the deadliest battle in World War II? Again, what was the deadliest battle in World War II? took place in Russia. And the city was named after the leader of Russia. That is why the Germans were so uptight and wanting to uh, take it over. It was unsuccessful resulted in many, many deaths. Well done, Eileen. Again, that was, what was the deadliest battle in World War II? Well done, Janelle. And again, that was, what was the deadliest battle in World War II? That was the Battle 
of Stalingrad. Next question. Why was John Wayne nicknamed Duke? Again, why was John Wayne nicknamed Duke? Well done, Max. It has been years. Nice. Welcome, Yvonne. Thank you for playing along with Janelle. Again, that next question was, why was John Wayne nicknamed Duke? Most people think. Well done, Eileen. That is for sure correct. He was always with. They were always together. It was a big one. And they would call him a little... Duke. And again, that was, why was John Wayne nicknamed Duke? It was the name of his family dog that was always with him. Next question. What person started Rastafarianism? Again, what person started Rastafarianism? wasn't Bob Marley, although he did make it a much more popular religion and enunciated the connection with marijuana. The religion was began for African-born people to unite in their homeland, which in particular, it was Ethiopia, not Silesi. Unless he went by a different name I'm not familiar with, and then I would apologize. But that again, that was what part, person started Rastafarianism. Oh, well that might have, that, I was gonna say Marcus Garvey, but that very well could be something I wasn't familiar with. And if, in my reading, I didn't find that, Janelle, and Yvonne, I apologize. Again, that was what person started Rastafarianism, and I'm saying Marcus Garvey. Next question. What was Gilligan's first name on Gilligan's Island? And that was, what was Gilligan's first name on Gilligan's Island? It was only mentioned in the, uh, in the first episode, Gilligan forgot to attach a rope to the anchor and they got stranded on that desert isle. He was the skipper's little buddy. 
The skipper used all his savings to buy the minnow. And go out for a little cruise. But they ended up shipwrecked on that desert isle. And again, that was, what was Gilligan's first name on Gilligan's Island? Not Fred. A good guess. And that what was what was Gilgan's first name on Gilgan's Island? And if anybody's able to tip, it's super appreciated. All the ways to do so are listed around the speed. And that was what was Gilgan's first name on Gilgan's Island? And that was Willie. And the last question this night is going to be. What happens every 12 seconds in a Holiday Inn in the USA? Again, what happens every 12 seconds in a Holiday Inn in the USA? Not as dirty as you may think. Again, that was what happens every 12 seconds in a Holiday Inn in the USA. Not someone is conceived, but that might not be far from the truth. Again, that last question was, what happens every 12 seconds in a Holiday Inn in the USA? Every 12 seconds, a towel is stolen. Thank you, Janelle and Eileen, for hanging out and playing. Thank you for everyone else who's checking it out as well. Thank you, Elisa, for all the support when it comes to helping me get this together and everything in general, really. Uh, thanks to Rabbit Hole Handbook and Jam Actomy. Thanks to Jason Cope for the help with the technical parts of it. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for joining in and everything else. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your Sunday. A fantastic week. And I'll see you next Sunday with uh, some Olympic trivia. May peace be with every last one of you.